You talk a lot about the election integrity project in the Twitter files, which Stanford and the University of Washington founded to monitor attacks on our elections. Um, and you say some stuff about them that a lot of your critics say is not true, and that affects your credibility. You said the EIP was founded in response to the government dropping its proposal for a disinformation government. Well, there you are. We're quoting you on screen. It wasn't. It was formed two years earlier. Uh, you suggest it was government funded, even though during the 20 election, 2020 election that you're covering, it wasn't. Uh, you say they labeled 22 million tweets as misinformation in the run up to the 2020 vote. They didn't. Uh, they got they flagged 3000 election misinformation tweets for labeling. So you were only 21 million nine hundred ninety seven thousand off. And you also um, claim the EIP was let me finish the question. You can come back in. You also claim the EIP was partnered with the government cybersecurity and infrastructure agency, CISA, to censor Twitter. But you mix up CISA. CISA, a homeland security agency, with the Center for Internet Security, the CIS, which is a nonprofit. In fact, you added an A to CIS. I think people can see it there uh, in brackets uh, to make that false claim. It's just error after error, Matt, on just this one That's topic. But the other, but the other ones aren't. Many people saw journalist Matt Taibbi's puzzling decision to appear on Mehdi Hassan's show to debate and kind of defend his Twitter files reporting for Elon Musk to push more Trump-like election fraud claims. People saw this and wondered, what happened to Matt Taibbi? Thinking that this is the peak of his terrible, horrible, no good, very bad week. I mean, he was still basking in the good graces of Elon Musk, an honorable man that Matt Taibbi just couldn't criticize. You've tweeted over 30 times about Musk since he announced he was gonna buy Twitter last April, and not a word of criticism about him in any of those 30 plus tweets. Musk is a billionaire who's been found to have violated labor laws multiple times, including in the past few days. He's attacked labor unions, reportedly fired employees on a whim, slammed the idea of a wealth tax, told his millions of followers to vote Republican last year, and in response to a right-wing coup against Bolivian leftist president, Evo Morales, he tweeted, we'll coup whoever we want. And yet you've been silent on all of that. How did you go, Matt, from being the scourge of Wall Street, the man who called Goldman Sachs the vampire squid, to being unable, unwilling to say anything critical all about this right-wing reactionary yeah. anti-union billionaire? Look, so I, I, I like Elon Musk. I, I met him. This is part of the calculation when you do, the, do one of these stories. Are they going to give you information that's going to make you look stupid? Do you think their motives are sincere about doing X or Y? Uh, when and and I didn't. I I, I thought. I mean, I, I did. I thought his motives were sincere about about the Twitter files, and I, I admired them. I think he did a tremendous public service in opening the files up. But then, Friday happened. Twitter began preventing users from engaging with tweets that contained links to Substack articles, blocking any likes, retweets, and comments from these posts. Additionally, users were unable to pin any tweets to the top of their profile if they included a Substack link. It's been widely speculated that Twitter disabled Substack from the site because the online publishing platform had recently launched a new feature called Substack Notes, which provides a Twitter-like feed to authors and subscribers of the newsletter site. And one thing Elon Musk does not condone is competition, even when his perceived opponents aren't even looking to take him down. It's a normal thing for people with huge egos, coupled with the fear that they'll be discovered for the frauds that they are. Taibbi is one of the many journalists that relies on Substack to make some money off of his work. And that loss of revenue was enough for Matt to come up with his very first criticism of Elon Musk, but not by name. And like the petulant toddler that he is, Elon Musk quickly unfollowed his favorite journalist because this toy doesn't work anymore. <laughs> 